Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the next instalment of the Cheap Camera Challenge when we find out whether this little Canon X90 can produce the goods and take some decent street photos. As I decided that street photography was going to be the challenge for the little Canon I decided to pick a venue I knew would be suitable and that was Newcastle because I've shot street photography there before. So before I left what I did was I set up the camera in manual mode, I set the ISO to 100, I set the aperture to 5.6. Now the idea of that was to give a reasonable depth of field because this camera has a smaller sensor than your average APS-C or full frame camera it's generally going to generate a greater depth of field anyway. So rather than use the standard walk around setting which I believe is around f8 on a full frame or a APS-C so I tried to compensate that by backing it off a little bit and that was going to hopefully give me a reasonable depth of field not too shallow but not too great so I could slightly isolate some of my subjects. I then set the front dial to exposure compensation and the rear dial to the, the shutter speed. One last thing, I found when I was playing with the camera that the S90 was quite difficult to hold onto in this position so if you're queuing up to take a vertical shot you'd need two hands and that was down to the very smooth paintwork that the camera has been given from the factory. So what I did was quite simply in a very cheap mod it was to stick some grip tape to the front of the camera body there I mean it was pennies to do and it's actually transformed the camera you can really get a good grip of it now so of course the best way to decide whether this camera is actually a good camera for street photography and actually worth that £16 investment is to take it out and use it and take photographs which is what I've done so here's the proof of the pudding, I'm going to show you the photographs now and I'm going to talk through those and uh, yeah, see what you think. So at our first shot of the day and it's the underpass at Hewitt Metro Station. Two figures ahead of me and I just exposed for the highlights and it's given a nice silhouette. Yeah, quite like this image. So this gentleman was waiting for the bus and he just caught my eye, mainly because of the unusual way his rucksack was over his shoulders obviously he's wearing a face mask sunglasses a hat it was quite a warm day so he looks a bit overdressed for the occasion these next two shots were taken through the glass panels of the bus shelter itself there was a an applied graphic to the glass panes and i thought it made an interesting sort of mask to shoot through yeah quite like these shots something a bit different i thought so this next shot was just a chap stood there waiting for the bus but I quite like the way that the shadow fell across half of the image in a diagonal just just like the way the light was in this particular shot so that's why I included this one this next shot was the first shot I took when we'd arrived in Newcastle city centre and it was just a candid shot while I was walking towards these people I don't think they're actually a couple I think the bloke actually emerges from behind the lady in the wheelchair I just like the way she's glancing over at the dog. It's a shame about the lens flare caused by the light bouncing off those information boards in the background really. quite like it. I like the perspective on it. This really wide angle because of the 20mm wide angle lens on this camera. This next shot I've included just because I like the composition. Ideally I really wanted somebody to be stepping into that reflection on the left hand side of the image. But this is sort of one of those shots you take so that you can come back to... Uh, next time you're here and hopefully you get the shot you really want I thought I'd include it because it's just it's a fantastic uh, bit of architecture anyway this next shot I've taken a similar shot before looking out from Windows Arcade out towards the Granger Market and as people pass by the opening to the doorway yeah it makes for a good shot I think this time I quite like it because the lamp was actually illuminated for a change, which is quite unusual. I did walk past later on and it would have been switched off. So I was pleased to have got the shot when I did. It's also a bit of a shame about the two easels at the front which have got COVID information on them, which kind of clutter the doorway a bit. But, you know, it is what it is. You can't help what the situation is at the moment. 
This next image, well, I could have taken that for several reasons. The grand architecture in the background, bright colourful window dressing of Eldon Square, the guy busking just in front of the doorway. But what really attracted me was the light reflected back down onto the pavement there, illuminating that section. Again, it could have been better, could have had somebody walking into that area, that would have been spot on, you know, that would have been the perfect image, I think, from this shot. But, you know, that didn't happen. I still quite like this one. This shot, I think, could have been a whole lot better. I didn't really feel like approaching Joe, obviously, as he's called. But yeah, I should have really gone up to him and asked him if he'd mind having a little portrait done. I could have got that in with that fantastic spotty background behind him. It would have been quite good, I think. Yeah, a bit of a regret with this shot, but uh, it's okay. This shot I took because I quite liked the way that the shadows were being cast across the street and that portion of light was illuminating the doorway with the woman having, obviously, a break, having a cigarette or something. Quite like it. Quite like the way that the double yellow lines sort of bring your eye into the centre of the shot as well. This photo, a bit further along from the earlier shot, and again, it's all about light, and this was the reflections onto the floor from the window of the department store opposite. I did think I'd actually missed this shot because the chap walking was quite brisk, and thought by the time the shutter had gone off, I thought he'd actually passed me by and hadn't got it, so I was quite pleased when I got back and had a look at the images and, and there he was, captured. So this alley was really good. I ended up coming back to this alley later on when the light was even better. And I'll show you those photos later on. This next shot was just one of those shots where you juxtapose your subject with some advertising in the background. And they say there's the sports shop in the background with the built to run slogan on it. And this poor old dear, she was very arthritic, I think. Um, she was really struggling. And, yeah, it was kind of ironic, I suppose. The, the two were together. An interesting image, anyway. This shot really frustrated me. I was determined to get the reflection of the drummer and struggling to, to get it to look symmetrical. Still isn't, but it is what it is. And, yeah, it's something to practice with next time, I think probably hard to believe but this shot was taken on Newcastle's busiest street Northumberland Street and this lady was selling sort of balloons and doing balloon modeling that type of thing just as a clown yeah I thought it was just a weird image so I took it anyway I don't think she was too chuffed I was taking a photograph but it was a public place so I took the shot and walked on this chap was completely oblivious to me when I took his photograph he was busy on his phone talking to somebody and yeah I just thought of it wasn't a shot I was 100% with the composition but I do see what I was trying to get there you've got the circles social distancing circles providing a, a sort of a leading line that's going away from them but it kind of makes a reverse L and kind of comes down and sort of leads into him I don't know if it works Quite like the reflections in the stonework as well beside them and obviously the reflections in all the windows. So it's it's it, it's got a quality about it, not 100% sure it works. These next shots were taken in the local bus station and I was initially trying to take photographs of the people within the bus station and everybody seemed to be quite perturbed that I was photographing them. So instead I looked for alternative compositions and just saw this patch of light at the entrance and the shadow which made a nice sort of division across the diagonal. And I just took a few shots and these were the three which I preferred. I think the first one's my favourite. I just like the light catching the back of the girl going through as well as a leg. Yeah, the shadow of the, the next person entering that light. They're all very similar sort of compositions, but yeah, the first one I think definitely my favourite. Although I was quite happy to get a good shadow with that third shot. This shot was taken on Percy Street and it's at the back of the shopping centre. What I loved about this shot was the shadow and also the glass bridge, sort of a walkway above the road 
that's got a nice reflection in it and it kind of complements the shapes on the pavement. I took quite a few shots here but this was the one I was most happy with. It's got good shadows from the people and I like the fact that the, uh, the lights sort of at the back of them. It uh, was an interesting shot to take because I had the security guard and cleaner from the shopping centre sort of giving me the evils while I was doing it. But as I was on public land, just on the outskirts of their territory, there's nothing they could do about that. This shot may be the photo of the day. I'd walked past Blackfriars in Newcastle, uh, which is just off Stowell Street, and came through an alleyway. And there was a cobbled area, which I thought quite liked the look of. I turned back and noticed this huge patch of light and how it worked quite well with the lines from the pavement and dull yellow lines going up in one way and this was contrasting going the other way. And so I just stood there for five, ten minutes just to see who came past. After a few missed attempts, this guy walked through. I managed to catch his shadow just at the right point, pointing back to the opposite corner. Yeah, really happy with that shot. With this shot, I was expecting somebody to walk past the shop and then... I just noticed this guy heading towards me on his bike. I didn't really have a lot of time to mess about with the camera settings, just took the shot and hoped for the best, basically. I think it came out alright. I like the irony that it's a running shop and he's on his bike. So we're back to the central arcade, but coming at it from the other direction and looking out towards Grey Street. I just stopped there, I like the archway. I like the pillar and just wait for somebody to walk into the shot down Grey Street, which just happened to managed to capture that guy just before he passed by the black bin in the background which would have been a bit of a disaster oh yeah this next shot i thought i was gonna get filled in by this guy i just spotted his shirt thought yep yeah, august hot day you know british summer thought it'd be a good shot and as i kind of approached him he was kept walking and i just fired off a couple of shots and he, he looked at me like that and uh, yeah i don't think he was too happy about it but that's street photography isn't it Sometimes you get people who object and sometimes they're quite happy to be in your photographs. This shot's fairly self-explanatory. Just good shadows, basically. And I just thought I'd capture those in an image. Okay, in this shot we're going back to the alley outside Phoenix department store. And the light had changed quite drastically from the previous shots I'd taken. The sun had come round and was now illuminating the tiled wall at the side of the building, which gave sort of this great light, and you still had the reflections from above, from the windows coming down into the street, but it gave a nice sort of distinct contrast to this orange band, and I just like these shots, so there are a set of, I think, five images there, pretty much similar compositions, some portraits, some landscape, and yeah, just waited for people to walk into the shots and and into the right positions. Quite like these shots. So this is the final shot of the day and it's in the same alleyway, uh, a bit further along and again we're playing with light and shadows. This woman was just stood having a break using a mobile phone, quite oblivious to me walking around taking photographs to be honest. I was able to compose this shot, quite like the reflections of the light on the opposite wall and obviously the perspective here you're getting the leading lines from the bollards and the double yellow lines there so which shots were your favorite i'd like you to comment and uh, tell me which one of your favorites in the comments below that'd be great we'll chat now about the camera itself i was quite impressed with the colors the Canon produced uh, they were quite vibrant even in the raw format that i shot in and i didn't have to enhance them too much Yes, could have done with a few more megapixels. 10 megapixels, it's not so bad, but in a compact camera like this with a quite a small lens, then yes, it is noticeable in, in the distance. You do get a little bit of noise. And finally, I did ha run into a few focusing issues with the camera. Now, I'm not sure if that was down to operator error. I've tried it since, and it's worked. So I don't know whether it was the conflicting settings I'd put into the camera or as I say operator error yeah I mean I love some of these shots quite happy with them and definitely worthy little camera 
So back to the start of this series, I asked the question, does photography have to be so expensive? Sure, if you're a pro and you have to keep up with your competition, so you know, you've got to be buying the best gear. But for us hobbyists, I think this demonstrates that there is an entry point to into photography at even the lowest point on the ladder. If you've enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up or a comment it will help me create more videos that you like if you haven't subscribed yet then please consider subscribing and certainly hit that bell and you'll get notifications of the next time I upload a video once again I'd like to say thank you very much for your continued support with the channel it means a lot to me that people spend their time watching my videos speaking of which if you'd like to check out another video or two of mine I'll be putting these two videos up for you to watch right now so thanks again for watching see you next time